as a disclaimer, my voice is just really terrible, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. And that's my hilarious intro. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a little bit different because instead of one story time, I'm gonna tell two. It's gonna just be so great. So this story, okay, this story I maybe have told before, but I didn't like how I told it, or I think I was just really offended that none of y'all really watched it. So I deleted that story time video a long time ago. I filmed it when I was in college, and I didn't really like how I told it. So I'm here to retell it, and you guys from day one, you're gonna watch it again. Don't skip through it, you're gonna watch it again. And then we're going to hear another story time video. But I'm gonna just tell you, this these videos are not clickbait. This was really scary stuff that happened to me. So feel bad for me, like just feel so bad for me. Hit the like button and subscribe. So let's start off with the first story. I was in about, I believe it was seventh grade. And I remember one of the things that I loved to do in middle school was ride my bike. Don't ask me why, because Texas, if you've ever been to Texas, the summers are terrible. They're hot, they're humid. It's not like I have a fun bike path in my neighborhood. Riding my bike just consisted of riding around the neighborhood, feeling like a daredevil, sometimes going up on the sidewalk, like street to sidewalk where you have to brace yourself and it's like, oh, I'm so glad I have shocks. Like this hurts, but this looks so awesome and maybe feels good, you know, and then really your butt, you're just growing a callus on it because, you know, you know, the first few times when you ride a bike, it really hurts. But by the end of summer, it's like, how does it not hurt? Like I must have a callus on my butt. So I'm not gonna go on and on about this, but I was riding a bike with my friend and this friend, I may or may not have done a story time video on. I'm not gonna point it out. I'm gonna see if you guys can recognize what story she was from. So now you gotta like watch all my videos. But, um, so this girl and I, at this point in time, we were friends. And so we're riding our bikes and I remember we were coming out of the alleyway, one of my alleyways. And you know, we didn't know where to go. We kind of hit the main street. It's like this wide street that cuts through our neighborhood and it's, you know, you could probably go, you know, two cars, this way, two cars that way. Um, so, you know, I guess cars go kind of fast on it, but you know, it's not a really busy road. Like you don't really know this road exists unless you're trying to get somewhere in the neighborhood. It's not like a shortcut for the main cars. So um, we get to that and I remember we don't know where to go, but she's thinking, well, let's go right. And on the right, there's a sidewalk for us to go on. And so the sidewalk, it's a, it's a normal size sidewalk, but there's this, cause the hill, cause the house right here is on a slight hill. There's like a brick wall and then a fence and growing out of the fence is this tree that has these softball like seeds. And if they fall on you, it's literally like a softball, you're dead. Like, I don't know why they have this tree, but they do. So I remember I specifically, I went, just before we did it, I was like, wait, I don't know why I said wait. Like I didn't have a hunch, but I didn't have a reason to say wait. You know, my friend goes, what? And I goes, well, well, I don't, I don't know why I just said wait. Like, I don't know. And so I said, well, um, I just need to get on my bike. Okay. And so we get on the bike and we take a ride on the sidewalk and then we hear this ear piercing screech. We don't even know where it's coming from, but it it's so loud, like it hurts my ears, but I can't find, you know, what's happening. But I look straight on and I see a car turn into the street. And when I say turn, this car literally goes on two wheels to make the sharp turn and onto this, this big street. It was so ear piercing. I've never seen a car go on two wheels. And this wasn't a Jeep, this was like, I guess a four door sedan, something like that. Kind of, it's one of those cars that it's definitely a bit bulkier, uh, but it's not, it's not a truck, you know, but it's on two wheels. And so it starts skidding around this, this street and there's no other car, it's just them. But they're literally, when they're skidding, they're going all the way into this side of the lane and this side of the lane and they're going back and forth. So I am assuming it was a drunk driver. I don't know how he picked up so much speed at this point in time. Like maybe he had, 
it didn't look like a Toyota, but maybe it was one of those defective cars that, you know, where the gas pedal went all the way down. I don't know because it was, it was dusk. It wasn't dark out. Like there was no reason. It wasn't drinking hour, you know, it wasn't New Year's, blah, blah, blah. It was a school night. Like, did this guy know it was a school night? So at one point in time, this car starts going towards me, like legit towards me. And I'm just making eye contact with the headlights because I'm panicked. I'm deer in the headlights, like literally looking in the headlights and I'm on a bike, which is faster, but not that fast. And anywhere behind me, what is a, a brick wall, a fence, <laughs> this big tree. I'm literally thinking I'm about to be that girl in scary movie where a car hits her and she's split in half. And then Charlie Sheen has to say his goodbye to me, but he's seeing if he could still have sex with my bottom half. But you know, at that point in time, I was really ugly and totally a virgin. So I know I wasn't even getting any action that I was really just going to be split in half with no happy ending, like no Charlie Sheen whatsoever. So, <laughs> so, uh, the car literally is coming my direction at this point. Like, beeline my direction and at this point in time he's like this far away like a little bit further I'd say because I'm giving the proportions of like the sidewalk being this I'd say so like the sidewalk which I'm in the middle of with a bike plus like this much but this guy's going super ultra mega fast and you know, slow reaction time, because I'm watching him literally come at me, but he had some reaction where he pulled the steering wheel completely all the way twist, like all the way it's got it. Like it was so, such a hard skid that he turned away from me and so much that he couldn't change back the steering wheel that he ends up crashing right next to me, but on the other side of the street. Okay, so he takes out um, electric, like an electric pole. What are they called? You know those those poles that hold the cords that go through the neighborhood. Okay, so you know the ones the little squirrels hop on and then they get electrocuted and they're like ah that one. Even though it was wooden, this one wasn't like leaning. It wasn't a weak pole. This was hanging on tight, very erect pole. Completely takes that out, knocks that over. And he completely knocks out a fire hydrant. Like this solid metal steel chunk in the ground, completely wiped out because he was going that hella fast. And I remember it was so scary. You know, someone comes out of the house, everybody starts coming out of the house, but one person comes out of the house and, you know, it's like, what he hit? You know, and it was funny because the power went out in the neighborhood and my mom freaked out because she had this hunch. She said, this has to do with Leslie. It was the weirdest thing. You know, she knew, but that's like a mom's instinct. It's nothing cool. That's just what moms do. They, they have that sixth sense. So, um, so, you know, I have to get a quote. Um, the police come and we're the main two witnesses. These, these little seventh graders. So the cop talks to my friend and I hear her, you know, exactly what happened. She talks to, um, they talk to me. I say exactly what happened. And I'm talking to my friend while the cops are kind of doing their own thing. And I'm like, oh my God, that, that was the scariest thing ever. And so she's like, yeah, like I can't believe it did a flip. I was there, <laughs> you know, and you know, I'm like a flip. And she goes, yeah, like it twisted. And then it like bounced and hit that. And it was just the craziest thing. Like not so much like a tumble, like it, she was saying like it did a corkscrew something that you would build in roller coaster tycoon a corkscrew like it's driving you know, like it's driving like this and then goes like that like what? and so i was kind of batty and i just i was there like i knew so what i did was i called over one of the police officers and i said she has more stuff to tell you like she's seen more than me and so I get them called over and then so they're like, so what is it? And then I'm like, come on girl, tell him, tell him what you see, what, like how fast he was going. And she goes, the car did a flip. And I could just see in her eyes, like she is terrified, terrified. And this officer I know is just thinking, this girl is full of shiz. 
So I just see him trying to be straight faced, but not really caring at all to know any more details. Granted, it's not that big of a detail, but he's like, okay, you know. And so I remember, I, I don't, I know I was mean to me, but why is she telling me that it did a flip when I was right there? So then we get to school and she always woke up so dang early. I always got there just right on time, maybe a little late, but like right on time. And so by the time I got to school, everybody knew about it, especially the teachers because she didn't have a lot of friends. So nobody would really listen to her, but the teachers, because they were getting paid to teach her. So all of my teachers knew and I was trying to tell the story and I didn't get to tell the story and get the pity and the attention that I deserve. So super mad about that. But okay, so like, can you guess what story time video she was from? Like, I wanna know. So like, leave a comment if you connect the dots. So the next one, this happened within, this wasn't, this wasn't last, this year. Don't think it was last year, but it was like the year before that. I think this happened three years ago. And a lot of times, well, my friend Olivia, every year, her and her entire family, she has a huge family, they all come together to the island of Brigantine, which is New Jersey. So you can hate on New Jersey all you want, but I visited Brigantine and I wanna move there. That place is amazing. So let me know if you guys have heard of Brigantine, but um, so a lot of times I like to invite myself to Olivia's family functions. And so sometimes I invite myself to Brigantine. I'm her friend who's been there the most, again, because I invite myself to Brigantine. So the waves are naturally really big because we're dealing with you know, this isn't Florida chill waters. These are scary, scary waves. And so I remember there was one time when I went and the waves were about four times as big as me. The scariest I've ever seen them, so scary. You know, but I'm kind of like, whatever. You know, I don't panic. I'm a lifeguard. You know, I was great at varsity swimming, so I know I have also just additional skills above that. You know, and plus Olivia was in the water and I wanted to play with my friend, play, you know, play time in the water. So we get separated and there's a rip, or there's a rip tide and it's starting to pull me towards this rip tide. And with rip tides, they can pull you in and spit you super far out. And this water is cold enough that this probably has sharks fairly close. Like this isn't, you know, this is really deep sea we're in. Do sharks like warm or cold? I think they, I think it depends on the shark, but they do both. But you know, like this is deep water I was gonna be thrown into. I'm, I'm just so small. I can't control it. Like I'm starting to get into this riptide. I'm being thrown around. I am panicking. So eventually my little bikini top that had no straps to it because I wanted to get a perfect tan is down to here. I don't know why, but the lifeguards never come in to save me. And I'm thinking they're gonna save me. They're gonna save me. You know, I'm just, telling myself this because I don't, I'm still, I'm nervous because this is now real deal waves, but I don't really panic naturally that much in the water. So I'm just robotically telling myself, you know, straight to shore, straight to shore. And I'm just thinking like a robot at this time. And I'm clawing my way. Sometimes I'm throwing myself over the waves if I can. I'm doing everything I can, but these waves are pulling me in and I know where this rip, this like, this riptide is. I think it's a riptide, right? I'm saying that right where they, where it pulls you under. Eventually, I do make it to shore. But why this was really a near-death experience was, I know, I got to a point where I was terrified. I was dizzy, I inhaled so much water. I was literally coming out of there topless, because I was, I mean it, like, I was gonna drown. I've never had that happen where, you know, I've been panicked like that. But I just wanted to include that in there because that was like a real near-death experience. I, it's just, you know, it's kind of, you know, you see about water and it, you just, you don't know the strength of it until you're in water. Water, we make, water makes us up, but we, we don't know anything about water as humans. We're, we're land creatures. So, okay, I'm just rambling. My camera's about to die. So thank you for watching. I, I don't know why you haven't subscribed yet, if you haven't, but subscribe. Please like this video. I'll, I'll get into more story time videos, but I just kind of felt like telling that one today. So, okay, I am off to like try to plan a social life because it's Friday and no one's texting me back, but okay.